you have a sympathetic nervous system first. So we said that the fibers arise from the lateral horn of the spinal cord. What does that mean? All right, what does that mean? The lateral horn of the spinal cord. All that that means is, in your spinal cord, you have your dorsal horn, your ventral horn, your lateral horn, right? Dorsal, lateral, ventral. The fibers arise from the lateral horn, right? You have a ventral horn, a dorsal horn, a lateral horn. So that's just talking about the area of the spinal cord where those fibers arise, okay? And then they're going to go over into the sympathy, part the peripheral nervous system, to the next side again here, and then continue on. Now the difference is in the sympathetic nervous system, there's a short preganglionic neuron. So that first connecting neuron is quite short. Why? Because the sympathetic chain is so close in location to the spinal cord. So this piece of neuron is so short, right? Very short in comparison to the parasympathetic. But the post-ganglionic neuron is much longer. It's going to go all the way from the sympathetic chain out to the affected tissue. So essentially what we see is that in the sympathetic system, the pre-ganglionic neuron is short and the post-ganglionic neuron is much longer. It has much of a ways to travel. It's because the sympathetic chain is so close to the Everyone with me so far? Any questions? What questions do we have? Questions or anything? All right. And as we mentioned before, each of these autonomic ganglia that we spoke about are going to connect to form this sympathetic chain. So essentially, the sympathetic chain is a collection of all your autonomic ganglia. Now, that was a general organization of the sympathetic. That's how things usually are. There are two exceptions. So there are two alternative blocks of communication in the sympathetic nervous system. So I'll hold that one more time for the benefit of those who want to make sure. The general communication is that pre ganglion neuron, synapse to that non non ganglion, right? It's a shorter neuron. And then post ganglion neuron leaves that all around ganglion onto the affected tissue and it's a longer neuron. That's the general organization. The first exception to that rule is if you have a collateral ganglia. Right? And all that a collateral ganglia is, is a ganglia that is not a part of the sympathetic chain. We have one here, we have one here, we have one here. So that was the first exception to that normal lot of communication. A collateral ganglia. The second exception is the adrenal medulla. So fibers can leave the spinal cord, travel all the way to the adrenal medulla, and synapse there. Right? Now let's talk a little bit about the adrenal. So you have two kidneys, right? They're in your lumbar or flank region, close to the posterior abdominal wall. Above those kidneys, you have two pieces of glandular tissue that are called your adrenal glands. Sometimes called the supraadrenal glands because they're barbecuing. That uh, organ, right, let me see here, sits above the kidneys, has two different layers, two distinct layers. It has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. You don't have to know the details about this, but I want you to understand the location of these cells. Right? It has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The medulla specifically has some cells called chromaffin cells, right? Chromaffin cells. And these chromaffin cells essentially act like post-ganglionic neuron. Why? Because a pre-ganglionic neuron synapses onto a chromaffin cell and has the same effect as a post-ganglionic neuron. Okay? Any questions about that? I'll say that one more time. So we have some cells in the adrenal medulla, they're called chromaffin cells. 
right? <coughs> three ganglionic neuron comes in, synapses onto this chromaffin cell, and it's going to release epinephrine, just the way a post ganglionic neuron would. Same effect. The only difference is this is going to be a more widespread effect, a more diffuse effect, because it's going to dump this hormone into the bloodstream. So it's a way for the sympathetic nervous system to amplify the response. Instead of you having one neuron talk to another neuron, talk to a piece of tissue, why not dump a bunch of hormones into the blood and have a wide diffuse effect? Think about it. If a dog is chasing you, you have some sort of threat, you want things to go pretty fast, right? You want this, this response to be pretty diffuse and pretty fast. You don't want it to be a one-on-one -on -one communication with a person. So this organization helps the sympathetic nervous system to give a wide diffuse response. Any questions so far? So these are the two exceptions to that general uh, communication that we saw on the previous slide. It's synapse at collateral ganglia, which is not part of the sympathetic gene. You can synapse at the adrenal medulla, and those chromophore cells will release their hormones, which are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, I'll mention it here. The neurotransmitter that postganglionic hormone releases is also norepinephrine and epinephrine. The only difference is because it's not in the blood, it's called a neurotransmitter. When it's in the blood, it's called a hormone. Same out here. Norepinephrine or epinephrine in the blood, they're called hormones. Okay. If they be released from the postganglionic neuron and synapse, they're called neurotransmitters. So essentially, they're interchangeable. All right, so this slide sort of sums up those three routes of communication. We had synapse onto the sympathetic chain, the synapse onto the chromophin cell in the medulla, or the synapse onto the collateral mm -hmm. end, which is not a part of the sympathetic chain. Any questions so far? All right, so this, this slide now is talking about the actual questions. Um, what would be written for the collateral? So the collateral ganglia specifically go to the digestive organs. You have the celiac ganglia, the celiac ganglia, the celiac ganglia, and those specifically go to the digestive organs. Any other questions? So this is giving us the exact root of these fibers. Right. Now, again, we're leaving from the lateral horn, right? You have your ventral horn, your dorsal horn. The fibers are coming specifically from the lateral horn. They're going to leave the spinal cord and enter a spinal nerve by leaving at that segment. Right? As they leave the spinal cord, they're what we call white ramus. White ramus. So these fibers are white ramus. In this image, they're in a lighter colored group. And these white ramus fibers are called white ramus because they appear more pale because they're actually myelinated. Okay? That's all. That's the reason why they're called white ramus. They're going to synapse onto this ganglia. So you can see this fiber leave here. In the spinal nerve, synapse onto the ganglia. Again, this is the sympathetic chain. This is your autonomic ganglia. This is your preganglionic neuron. Synapse at that ganglia. And then the fibers that are leaving the ganglia to re enter the spinal nerve are called gray ramus. I'll go over that one more time. So we have white ramus fibers leaving the lateral point of the spinal cord. Entering the spinal nerve, right, the ventral root. Entering that spinal nerve, synapsing at a ganglia. And then the fiber changes. It's now not myelinated, and it's called a gray ramus. So it's in a darker blue here. Leaving the ganglia once more as a post ganglionic neuron, it's going to re enter the spinal nerve and continue on to the effective Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So essentially, the fibers that are going from spinal cord to ganglia are myelinated. They're called white ramus fibers. 
So fibers that are going from ganglia to affective tissue, and again, they're going to have to get back into that spinal nerve. That's called way and the end of that Any questions on that? Right. So this is, this uh, is also getting that. Uh, so the fibers are going to leave the ganglia as way It's the darker blue here. We enter the spinal nerve and continue on here. This is just talking about the difference in the fibers as they synapse at that ganglia and continue on to the effective All right. Now, we move on to the parasympathetic system. So, I'll just I'll summarize what we said about sympathetic. Sympathetic has your shorter preganglia neurons and your longer postganglia neurons. And those fibers were arising from T1 to L2, right? We had three lots of communication for those fibers. We synapse onto the sympathetic chain, synapse onto a collateral ganglia, or synapse onto an adrenal chromatin cell. Right? Now let's look at the parasympathetic system. These fibers are going to arise from the brain stem, specifically the nuclei of cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. And now their pre ganglionic neurons are going to be much longer. Their right? cranial neurons are much longer than the spinal nerves. So they're going to leave the brain stem, travel all the way out into the peripheral nervous system, sit up onto a ganglia that's very close to the affected tissue. Right? And then a shorter post ganglionic neuron will go from the ganglia to the affected That is also going to hold for the sacral spinal cord. They're going to leave the sacral spinal cord. They're going to travel all the way out into the pelvis, so that takes the genitalia. Then they get down very close to the genitalia. And then it's going to go from the autonomic ganglia all the way out to the effective So it's a longer pre ganglionic neuron and a shorter post ganglionic neuron. Can anyone see that contrast? So essentially, these ganglia in the parasympathetic system are not close to the spinal cord. They're closer to the affected tissue. Right? Any questions so far? So in the circles, the ganglia? Mm -hmm. This is the ganglia. Okay. But it's closer to the affected organ. Okay. And you don't have to know the names of those ganglia. Like the ciliac ganglia, which Synapses up to the lack of neurons, the saxonomic rotation, the passive therapy, that they're much closer to the actual effective organ. All right. So those cranial nerves were three, seven, nine, and ten. We're going to talk a little bit about them here. Three is your ocular motor nerve, right? Your ocular motor nerve, and that is going to leave this the brain stem. Again, this very long cranial nerve travels all the way to the scambia and then it goes to the lacrimal glands. And that's going to be the secretions from the eyes, which are the Again, vagus is going to leave the brain stem, right? Here with Ella. Vagus is a very long nerve, so it's going to travel all the way into the larynx, it's going to innervate some muscles there. It's going to synapse onto a ganglia close to the heart, right? And then a shorter post ganglia on the is going to go from that ganglia to the heart. It's going to synapse onto a ganglia close to the lungs, and then a shorter post ganglia on the norm is going to go from that ganglia to the lungs. Right? Can everyone see that? That makes sense. So we have vagus, ocular motor, facial, glossopharyngeal. And again, you don't have to know the names of the ganglia that are associated with those. Just know that those four cranial nerves are a part of the parasympathetic system. But vagus is going to be the most important. It's going to innovate the lungs. It's going to innovate the heart. It's going to innovate all of the gastrointestinal organs. It goes all the way into the gut. Now, what's being mentioned here is that the pelvic nerves are distinct from the somatic nerves in that region. What does that really mean? 
That means that in the final segment, S2, S3, S4, right, behind your pelvic nerves, which are your parasympathetic nerves, they're going to travel into the pelvis, again, like I said, close to the synapton ganglia that's close to the organ that we're going to, and then their pre ganglia ganglion is going to go from that ganglia to the organ. But we don't want you to confuse those with the somatic spinal nerves, which are nerves that go to your legs. Okay, those are innovating voluntary tissue that's your skeletal muscle. So you have pelvic nerves, which are your, your autonomic nerves, going into your pelvis. You have somatic nerves, which are going to your legs, innovating voluntary 